What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Knockin' Neff Show. We back. What's going on with it, man? Where you been? Where you been for the last year and a half? Working. I've been working. I've been acting. I've been shooting, producing new content for other people, trying to keep it pushing. What about you? Life and <laughs> that's all I've been doing. Life and year and a half, taking care of pops, trying to get this business off the ground. It's been rough. I'm not going. I'm not going to sit here in front. It's been a. It's been a tough 2021. 20, Tell them what business you talking about. Imperial Six. So the story behind the whole Imperial Six brand was when we started knocking Neff, uh, I was reaching out to different companies trying to get them to to be a part of, of this. Yeah. Of this. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to support other black owned businesses, but not just black owned businesses, just businesses in general. Mm -hmm. And people were being, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, people were real they were real weird and stingy about their stuff. So I had to kind of like figure it out. So I figured, you know what? I like their stuff, but I like my stuff. I figure I can like my stuff more. So came up with Imperial Six, and you know now we rocking. About to be in two two different storefronts, selling online, um, fitness apparel, uh, business casual, um, t shirts, the whole nine. We try we trying to do sweatshirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, hoodies all of that. You know so. I'm super excited about it. I mean, the way it started, the way it started was on some petty type stuff, but you know, it's actually working out. So I can't can't be mad at it. But basically, you know, we've been we've been on hiatus for a year and a half, not because of anything bad, just just life. You know, like I take care of my pops full time, and between that, kids and and working and you know trying to come up with new stuff, it's been. It's been rough, so we had to kind of put knock and neff on the on the back burner for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but we back. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to keep it keep it pushing and, and you know keep it with content and keep it moving. We want to give a shout out to our old producer Josh. He still works with us, but Josh has moved on to bigger and better things. Josh is in Los Angeles being a voice actor and an actor, and he kind of doing his thing, man. So be on the lookout for Josh. He's on. Uh, he does voice acting on this podcast type Dungeons and Dragons game thing on Twitch called Dungeons Divided. So if you're missing Josh, check him out on that and then be looking because he's doing a lot of acting on the side. So check him out. But we miss you. So whenever you you know get a chance we to come miss back. You, Josh. <laughs> whenever you get a chance to come back, always always welcome, always open arms. You know, it was it was, it was a trio. It was just us two, then it, it ended up being a trio, and now we back to the original <laughs> cast and crew. Mm -hmm. So, and anyone who wants to come, be an intern or, or work as a uh, producer on the show, hit us up. Yeah. We're always looking for new people to help out. So let's talk about this last year. What kind of trials? What kind of you know kind of things you've been going through this last year? This last year, I'm not gonna lie, it was rough for me personally. It's been rough. I can't say there's really been no trials and nothing like that. I, I haven't had a year like you. My thing is I've been trying to get this business of film production, video production, podcast production off the ground. And also, I'm to the point where I'm in my last four years of working a job for somebody else. And in that process, like this year, we had to learn a new system at work. And I can't lie, man. Almost retired, bro. Because I really didn't. I'm like, I'm in my last four years. I don't want to learn nothing new. You, 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 you getting ready for summer vacation? That's yeah, what it feels like. like. A long you know, vacation. Yeah, you on that last, that so last I month. was like, you know, at first I was reluctant. I, I was didn't want to do it. But I went on and bit the bullet. And now I've learned it. And I'm doing, you know, my yeah. work. Um, you know, economically things have changed for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I have to find other streams of revenue to make money. I've been shooting weddings. I've been shooting, like, corporate videos and yeah. stuff like that. But um, that's ultimately what I want to do. I want to just be behind the camera producing, shooting, and doing that kind of stuff. Even the acting thing. I've been doing, I've, I've acted in two shows um, recently. So it's like, that's what I want my life to yeah. be. 
Yeah. So that's what I'm pushing towards, and that's what I've been kind of doing in this last year and a half. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's been, you know, like I said, I'm a full-time caretaker of my dad. He's 88, about to be 89. You know, and his his 21 was, was rough. You know, his 21 was rough. He came down with a, he had a, uh, had to have a stint put in. Mm -hmm. because his body was just acting up. I'm not going to get into the gist of it, but his body was acting up and, you know, it was almost, it was almost curtains. You know, if, if we didn't catch it in time, you know, my dad's strong. He's been Shreveport, Louisiana, 88, <laughs> ate everything on the planet, mm -hmm. hoof, ear, snoop, <laughs> you know, so whatever this is, it, it ain't, it ain't going to put him down. But, you know, he's 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 been kicking for a long time. But, I mean, that stress of just that constant taking care. I mean, you know, we all have kids, but that constant taking care of an adult. Your kid, you can tell, sit down, go over there, be quiet. You can't say that to your dad. You can, but it, it, comes, it, it comes with consequences. Yeah, it, 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 it makes, one, it makes you feel some type of way because as we get older, and, and, you know, you have kids, as we get older, your kids hopefully will be there for you not saying take care of you but be there for you but that respect still has to remain so and, a, and another thing that's interesting to that is like my my wife and i my, my mother-in-law we take care of her mm -hmm. she she's still up and kicking though but you watch your parents become more childlike yes and it's back. interesting because i'm watching it with my mother i'm seeing with her mother i watch it with your father yeah it's interesting how that whole dynamic comes and it's so and, it, and that part is so weird because you have so much respect for them because of what they've done and, and how they treated you, you know, if mm -hmm. they treated you great. But being the parent in that regard is very odd to me now because mm -hmm. now I'm the one who's cooking and cleaning mm -hmm. and washing clothes and doing all this stuff and being, <laughs> and being you know, basically Susie Homemaker for, for this situation. Mm -hmm. And you realize exactly who your parents are. Like, the one thing I, I tell my kids all the time, I said, me and my daughter, my daughter, I bought my dad, my dad has a book, and it's like, the book says, it's a bunch of questions, and I, I suggest that you guys go get this book, it's called Questions for My Father, or My Father's Life, or something, I'll, I'll figure it out, what, I'll, I'll put it up, but it just basically asks questions from the time of adolescence, very, very young age, to now, and it asks, I mean, Little stuff. First time you rode in a car, first kiss, teacher's name, stuff like that. But then it goes into heavy stuff. See, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm, I'm six years too late. Yeah. My dad's gone. Yeah. And then, like I said, I'm more than six years because it's probably I'm eight years too late because yeah. he started developing dementia and he wouldn't have been able to answer them questions. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. So my daughter takes this book. And this is the one thing I'm grateful for my 13 year old, she takes this book. She'll sit there while I'm cooking dinner. She'll ask me a bunch of questions and ask me all kinds. And now, don't get me wrong, it's hard to answer some of these questions because a lot of these questions are like, what's your biggest regret? What is the thing that if you could change in your life, would you change immediately? You know, it's though it's those questions. And I said all of that to say this, when you're taking care of your parents, you realize exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. As a person, egotistical, prideful, stubborn, uh, immature, all these things you realize exactly who they are when you get older and you develop controlling, mm -hmm. petty, um, you realize who they are because now you're an adult and you're going through your changes mm -hmm. in life and you're going through your personal growth. And now you're not looking at them as a parent or a father or a mm -hmm. mother. You're looking at them as a person, as an individual. And as an individual, you're an asshole. Like, so the things that my father has done in just life, you kind of look, you kind of sit back and you think like, oh, I get it now. Like, I now I see why you're in the position. Now I see why this person said. Mm -hmm. So bringing that back around, when my daughter's asking me these questions, I tell my kids all the time, like, look, I don't want anything to happen to me. And you guys go through my phone and be shocked. I don't. I want you guys to know exactly who your father is. Know me from top to bottom. I don't want you to be like, oh, dad was, he was doing, no, you guys gonna know. 
And I'm not saying I'm not saying give all the secrets up, but what I am saying is I want my kids to know exactly mm-hmm. who their father is and who they've been dealing with. Through them apps and see. <laughs> 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 Let's go through that. They'd be like, oh, uh, Dad didn't tell me about that. <laughs> you know, so it's that for me was probably the biggest hurdle that I had to get over because I held. You, we hold our parents in such esteem mm-hmm. that when they do kind of revert back to being kids or childlike, now who are they? When I used to be in medical and I would go to, I was working out here a lot. I'm going to all these like different, you know, convalescent homes and mm-hmm. retirement facilities. And I've been called so many names because these people have dementia and they're reverting back to who they were as a youth. Or I've been catcalled. Or I've had my butt grabbed. Or I've had women like walk up to me and grab my crotch. All kinds of crazy, like all kinds of crazy stuff. Because that's who they were at a young age. And you revert back to that. I even, the first time I heard any meeny miny mo catch a nigger by the toe was at a convalescent home in Sacramento. This old white lady told me, said that to me. And I was shocked. I was like, blasphemy. Like, what? What are you talking about, ma'am? But she was going back to how she was raised. Mm-hmm. So when my father, it's the same thing. He's going back to how he was raised. So we're having these conversations and I start to see things and it gets difficult. And just being stuck and being there the whole time, it's hard. It's frustrating, you know, because I have my own life. Mm-hmm. Want a relationship, kids, vacation, take trips, all that stuff, you mm-hmm. know. Right now I'm in the prime and I'm putting myself on the back burner and trying to be selfless for somebody else. And it, it gets to be difficult at times. And we, especially when you don't have a lot of help. Yeah. You know, so that's basically my, my year in a, as a whole, it's been mainly that, but when I do have time, you know, I still hit the gym, you know, I still try to stay in, in somewhat of a shape. Still gymming. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still gymming. Still trying to be physically active and, and fit. Um, like I said, the apparel company, you know, we're going to be in a, like I said, a few stores. We're going to be in a boutique, a barbershop, a Max Muscle and Modesto. Um, check them out. They'll have all the fitness stuff. Um, so we make it, we make it things happen. Like, even though you, you get slowed down, that doesn't mean you stop, you know? And we got Old Man Muscle shit coming soon. Old Man Muscle. Old Man Muscle, part of the Imperial Six family. So that's going to be dope, too. That's going to be dope, too. So. But yeah, check us out, uh, Imperial Six Apparel on Instagram, uh, Imperial Six on Instagram, Knock and Neff Show on Instagram, we all over the place, YouTube, whole nine, so mm-hmm. we're trying to do something, but mainly trying to come back, <laughs> trying to come back and be a little consistent. So let's, uh, let's hit, what topic you want to hit just for, to start it off? Set it off. You know, we had talked about. Earlier, we were kind of having a conversation, and the one topic that I really want to get into is this: is this uh, masculine, this toxic masculinity type of thing. You know, we talked about Brittany Renner. We talked about uh, Kevin Samuels. We talked about uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the other dude? I'm gonna say like this, and you know, it's funny because um, in my cigar group. We, we, you know, fellas, we talk. We talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about women. We talk about this. And it's interesting to me because men who don't have daughters look at women different. Yeah. Men who have daughters look at women in a whole different light than men who don't have daughters because they don't have to worry about the guys that their daughter's dating. Or what kind of guy is going to push up on their daughter. Mm-hmm. Because I think if some of these men had daughters, they wouldn't be the way they are and say some of the shit they say. So have you heard Have you heard a lot of Kevin Samuel stuff? Have you watched it? I used to listen to it, uh, you know, listen to and watch his stuff. You know, I wasn't a every week dude, but I, I, I've watched a few of his. So, his <laughs> so, so I watched some of his stuff. And... It's hard because I got I got girls, and it's hard because <laughs> some of the stuff I agree with, and some yeah. of the stuff is fu- some of the stuff is funny, you know, and some of the stuff I'm like, nah, that's that don't apply. A lot of the shit is true, yeah, but it's delivery. 
And that's it's, what not, it's not what you're saying, it's how you say it. It's how you say it. Yeah, and to me, it. a lot of times, my issue with Kevin Samuels is, like, I watched one where the girl called in. and <laughs> Those are my favorite. And she, she was like, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm a six-figure woman, mm-hmm. and I want a six-figure man, and but I can't seem to get a six-figure man, and I, I'm, I'm nice-looking. I consider myself an A, and then you, and it was like a video call. So you see her, and, yeah. and she was a pretty girl, mm-hmm. but she had a kid. Mm-hmm. And he, his thing was, the, so here's what you got to remember. The men you want don't want you. Mm-hmm. He said, because you come with you come with luggage. You come with a kid. You, you, it, it's a, it becomes an add water and stir family. Yeah. And he's like, why would I, single man with money, want a woman with a kid when I can have three other ones that don't. Yeah. Some of them are younger than you or more or, or, or have more money than you. And, you know, that was his thing. And I understood it. But the way he fed it to her, he was like demeaning her. Yeah. And I was like. So, I so okay, I have two ways of thoughts on that. I'm 42. I'm single. I have kids, and the one thing that kind of that kind of that kind of sparked my interest was when they were talking about a man's prime versus a woman's prime. Mm-hmm. Woman's prime is between twenty one and I think he said I think it was like twenty one and thirty two or something like that. And who's a woman's prime? Okay. A man's prime is between thirty thirty five and forty six, somewhere in there. Right. A woman, once she hits 34, 35, her value diminishes. A man, once he hits 35, 36, when he has money right, he figured out how to dress, he has the car that he wants to drive. If he doesn't have any kids and he's traveling, he's living his life, he's handsome. That's the prime age for a man. And as I'm looking at the world right now, as I'm looking at the people in my pool who are interested in me or I've had interest in, it's very true. Because the women that are in my age demographic, 42 going up, Mm -hmm. now it's going like this. Why would I want a woman? And this is, it is, it is sounds, coming from me, it sounds sounds so sexist. sexist. You're sexist. And I understand that. But at the same time, like, it's very true because... A woman who's 42, and I'm not saying a woman who's 42 doesn't have her shit together, who doesn't. I'm talking about a woman who's just 42. Just the average 42. Average 42. If you look at her, she's set in her ways. One. She's probably established business-wise, but she's also probably living in her masculinity, which is a whole different conversation we could have. Because she's probably in that age where I can I can travel, I can do this. I don't want a man. I don't need a man. I don't need a man. So... That's a whole different like type of woman that you're getting involved with. Whereas if I date a woman who's 33 and knowing that her biological clock is ticking, knowing she don't have kids, whatever that is, the 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 balance is a little bit closer of 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 that. Which is so crazy because when I look at women who are 42, mm-hmm. they look 42 like they don't we'll look see, like they we'll see. my thing is this and, and well yes and no because you're like me we're in the gym we see a lot of in shape women and i can't lie at my gym the best looking women are the older ones because they're in their because one well one of two things they're taking care most women aren't that right but i'm saying like but but see my thing is and that's another thing if i was single at this point I wouldn't be a, a swipe left dude. You know, yeah. I'm one of them dudes yeah. that if I'm gonna meet my women organically. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I wouldn't so if I didn't meet her at the mall, the the movies, mm-hmm. or like at a at, at a, a restaurant at a or restaurant yeah, or at some a friend's kind of, yeah. friends function or something like that. Yeah. Or just but I see a, a woman I think is attractive and approach her. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be dating. Yeah. Like me, I, I'm at the gym. I, I I see really attractive women at the gym. If I was single, the gym would probably be my spot because I spend so much time there at four in the morning. And it, to me, yeah. like for me, I'm a four in the morning gym guy. 
what's going to spark my interest for one is she's up at four in the morning in the gym. That means that she has, yeah, a, you got, you guys she already, has you guys, a certain moxie about you guys, her that you guys I like. Are, you guys already have a commonality. Right. Between you guys and, being at the yeah. gym. And the, my thing is, she, and she takes herself yeah. serious. You know what I mean? But I, like I said, I, I don't know, man, because I'm looking at... I've never been the old. I've never been the older dude that like younger chicks. I've always liked older women in the in mm-hmm. the, to begin with, even when I was in high school and all of that. But I look at it like this. Like you said, even at the 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 part where you said they're at their prime, most women got kids. But that's why the toxic masculinity thing Kevin Samuels is saying what he's saying mm-hmm. because a lot of men who have their shit together, mm-hmm. who's driving the the. The, the Mercedes S class who's mm-hmm. driving the, the brand new Tesla. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to get a woman, why am I going to get a woman with a ready made family? True. But if why, I have all these options, see, you think I'm going to pick that? A lot of them dudes got kids all around the place. That's true. But there's a difference between him going to visit his kids or him having his kids all the time. There's a true. whole difference. But my thing is so, and I guess that's always been my issue. A lot of these people that women call catches. Because they have all of this stuff. A lot of times behind the scenes, they don't really have their shit together. But that that's the same thing goes for women. And that's the crazy thing because we look at these women and we hold them on a pedestal. Because we... Okay, so you know one thing, you know one thing I, I've caught myself doing? I'm a shoe guy. We all know this. When I'm looking at these videos and I'm looking at these women, gym pictures. You know, my Instagram is full of gym stuff. Right, mm-hmm. workouts and this and that. And everybody's on there showing, me. <laughs> and everybody's showing, you know, how they do squats. The women are pulling up they mm-hmm. tights. I'm like, all right, bro, whatever. So, the first thing I look at is mm-hmm. I look at her shoes. She might have brand new gym stuff on, but I give a Imperial Six to people so they can wear it in the gym, mm-hmm. so they can advertise the product. Mm-hmm. So she's wearing all this. Stuff that's probably given to her, but you look at her shoes mm-hmm. and they're beat, or they're old new, not not New Balances, but old New Balances. Mm-hmm. There are things that you know, like okay, like if you if you I dress a certain type of way, I'm not gonna walk into the gym with a brand new fit on and bust the shoes. I'm not gonna do it. You, when are you gonna walk in anywhere with a brand new fit on and some See, I'm not, and some you beats? Gotta remember, I'm not a shoe guy. But even still, you're not I gonna heard, walk in anywhere with. Looking, you gonna tell me you gonna walk in with brand new shoes, brand new pants, and a busted shirt? No. Okay. So look at these chicks, and you'll see that even though the appearance is what it is, it's not that. So most of these chicks that these that 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 these men are vying for in DMs, I got a girl. Uh, well, that you goes, know what? I'm lying, man. Because I go to gym. I got a, I, my favorite dry fit got paint stains. <laughs> <laughs> I look good in that motherfucker. Yeah, you I know, can't know do so it. I can't I'm do it. walking around in there doing. So I'm, I'm lying. <laughs> so I got paint I'm stains lying. on it. I would. I <laughs> can't do it. But I'm saying like. We we are holding these people on pedestals, and, and this, this goes for both sides. We're holding these men on pedestals that we think have stuff, who probably don't have their shit together, who probably use credits maxed out, who are probably trying to live off of what whatever, versus the women who look great, who are physically appealing, but don't have anything in any either, either. You know, so it's hard because I'm I, I look at this and like I said, being single. My eyes have been open to a lot of different things. And the one thing that I can say, especially being single now, is like if you don't have, even if you don't have your shit together, if your mind is okay, like if you're doing your self work, if you're trying to be spiritual, not religious, but trying to be spiritual, mm-hmm. if you're trying to be a good person and, and live a life of a certain type of way, then I can, I, that I can, I can fuck with. But all this other stuff where people are like, oh, this is, it ain't, it ain't me, it's you, these men ain't shit. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm not. Yeah, but this is, and, I, and, but, and see, I think it's the, for me, I'm going through the same thing with dudes. Dudes do so much talking shit about women. You get what you attract. And so, that, I, and absolute, so that I absolutely and, agree. And, and, and like, I got a buddy, he's an asshole. His wife don't seem like she's an asshole, mm-hmm. but she got to be an asshole lover because she love him. Yeah, just like well, I'm, I'm, a, I, I, I can admit, or she, could, or she could be a glutton for punishment. I can admit, 
I'm a bit of an asshole. My wife knows I'm a bit of an asshole. <laughs> Yeah, but you're not an asshole to her. No, I'm not an asshole to her, but it's like she'll call me on my shit, and that's what I love about her. I mean that, but uh, that, but that's a good relationship. Look, yeah, the best relationship I know. I'm not gonna say who it is, but people who know me know who this person is. You know who this person is exactly. The best relationship I've ever seen two people were. I based my my past relationship. I based it off of them. I was mm-hmm. trying to be that. Mm-hmm. the 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 most immense amount of growth I, I, of growth I've ever seen in a relationship was when two people came to the conclusion that they had to separate themselves mm-hmm. from each other, even though they loved each other, they wanted to be together. They had to separate themselves from each other and work on their own shit. Mm-hmm. Not be in, not, I'm not saying be involved with each other, but like one moved, one stayed in LA, one stayed out here. And then they switched, and they would switch, and they would switch, mm-hmm. and they would switch, and they would switch. Then they came together. Once they fig- figured out their own problems and they addressed their own problems, not totally fixed them, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. knew that because they were better people, they could come together and be a better couple. A couple. Mm-hmm. When I saw that, I was floored because there's not a lot of people in life. Not just in your relationship, in life, who are willing to do that, who are willing to sit here and say, you know what? It's not you, it's me. I need to fix myself. I love you, I want to be with you, but I need to fix myself. And I think a lot of the toxic masculinity and a lot of the women talking shit about men is because people don't, they're always pointing the finger at another person saying, you, 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 when in actuality, you should be like, "Mm, you know what? I'm an asshole. Or it's my fault. Or and, and see, I'm yeah. sorry. And see, that was my thing. I was like, I have to fix my shit. And I've become a better person because I knew that I needed to. Yeah. But a lot of people don't look at themselves in the mirror and think about, because now I even think about shit I say. And I used to just be like, mm, I'm going to say what I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you. And now I even think about what I say because sometimes I got to think about it. Who am I gonna offend with this? And am I gonna offend somebody I truly like or love yeah. by saying this? Um, I said something when I when my kids were young to my kids, and it came out a certain way, mm-hmm. and it, it's and I, I regret it so bad, yeah, because it's. My and I said, and both my son and daughter heard it, and I do did not. I don't want them to normalize that. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking out loud, and I didn't say the whole thought process of what I was you saying. Said, I just said the the, 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 the worst part of it. Worst part of it. <laughs> and so it that haunted me for years. Yeah. Um, but to me, the whole. I feel like men that are men that expose a lot of toxic toxic masculinity are people that are trying to build themselves up or keep themselves on a pedestal. Yeah. Because I can, I can my that. thing is you can't be it's yin and yang. You have to respect, understand, and be compassionate for the other side. Mm-hmm. In order for you to get that same respect, yeah. I think it's. I think it also appeals to a a certain demographic of men who or women who are who feel slighted in a way. Mm-hmm. They're not getting the respect they deserve. They're not getting the attention they think they deserve. Mm-hmm. They're not getting the applause or kudos that they think they might okay but want. here's a, i'm gonna run this to you remember we were watching the chicks podcast and they were talking about the kind of dudes they like and if he don't have this or do this they don't want them you remember mm-hmm. we were watching mm-hmm. that that day mm-hmm. and we both had an opinion on it mm-hmm. So they, to me, is that the is that well, toxic? I mean, is it would that be considered toxic femininity? I think, I think you like you said before. I think you are, you you attract what you are, and a lot of those women are single because of that. 
because they're looking for a certain type of man that doesn't actually want them, that doesn't actually value them, that doesn't actually want to. I have a friend, one of my one of my best friends in the world, and he gets so upset because the women he likes don't like him. Plain and simple. And I'm like, bro, you need to just just expand your horizons. Like, I don't have a type. I've dated tall women, short women, you know, black, white, Filipino. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, just and he's like, no, I want this. Okay. And this woman, the girl he likes is five foot three, black hair, you know, tan skin. And that's what he likes. And they don't like him. It's just that he's not their type. He likes Courtney Cox. He like he likes <laughs> chicks like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who who try to be in the gym and stuff? And mm -hmm. I'm just like, bro, you need And until he changes his mindset, mm -hmm. he'll always feel the way he feels. I Always. think the biggest regret in my life, in my, you know, dating life, being single, mm -hmm. I wasn't more open. I was open to a lot, but there was stuff that I wasn't open to. Yeah. And I think that I should have been more open. I'm open. He's open. He's open. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and, you know, I mean, the, the, the hardest part, especially being, okay. So black men are obviously wanted, sought after. We're, we are sexualized in a way. We are held on a pedestal, but also buried six feet deep. Like it's the weirdest contradiction of wanting us and wanting to be. It's like, it's like, it's like our culture. They love the culture, but they don't love us, mm -hmm. right? The hardest part is being with a person and them not understanding the plight that you go with, that you go through. That, that comes with That comes with your this. Being, yeah. I'm six foot three, 270 pounds. Like, I'm not a small guy. Mm -hmm. So when I walk into a place, when me and you would go to Raider games, mm -hmm. we would go and people are automatically looking at us. We're big dudes. We mm -hmm. walk into a place, we have a presence. We, yeah, yeah, and it's like... And it's mm -hmm. like, who, who are these kids? So, go... <laughs> Training camp. How come you're not on the field? Mm -hmm. We're going to Raiders train. How come you're not on the like, Oh, bad knee. Like, oh, I had to make up his oh, my knee. Blew it out in college. Just running back. Oh, you know, whatever. Every, everybody big and black guys. <laughs> Every, everybody. Well, I can't be a scout. You know, but I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong. It made me feel some type of because we got Raiders training camp. Mm -hmm. They playing. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm playing with me. But we have a presence about us in people love that they love being around that energy they love being around that mm -hmm. power but their families don't like it mm -hmm. their grandparents don't like it mm -hmm. because they look at us differently than his granddaughter looks at yeah. you know i have a daughter a nine-year-old and her her grandfather cannot stand me never talked to this man a day into my life not once not one time i've never talked to him can't stand me wow oh yeah so, but you already know me and me and her mom were cool. We was best of friends. Mm -hmm. Even now, we're still really close. Mm -hmm. But went to her baptism. Grandfather didn't show up because I was there. Like it's it's deeply ingrained, deep. So that part is the hard part because as accepted as we are, we're not. Mm -hmm. And we might be accepted by the woman that loves us or the woman that we're oh, dating. Right. And, but, and then you're accepted for reasons, you know. Hundred percent. You're, you're accepted not. because you're you're successful. Oh man. You're you're accepted because you're the different one. Yeah, you're not. You're like, accepted. You're not like them. You're accepted because you're the athlete bringing in the money. Mm -hmm. You're accepted because you're successful. Yeah. And you're like I said, you're the asterisk or the the yeah the the, the, the exemption exempt, yeah you know, the, the yeah the exception to the rule yeah, but it's. Even in high school, I dated this girl, and her dad was like, I'm taking your car away. You're not going to college. You can't be with me. Plain and simple. Can't be with me. It's been, like, this is not, it's 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 fun and games, but it ain't all fun and games. Like, there's a reason why, there's a reason why a lot of black dudes run through chicks because they know it can't go any farther than just that. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do whatever you want. Like you're not gonna be accepted in a lot of different ways. So you're just like, well, I ain't gonna why am I gonna invest all this time in loving this person? And then all of a sudden 
her grandparents, her parents look at me differently. Mm -hmm. Her parent, bro, when I was married, I'll tell you some stuff. I can tell you some stuff about that because my ex mother in law said some stuff, but I understood, like, I understood she didn't mean it in a certain type of way, but she still said it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, down to the point of of my kids, her calling my in in she's white Canadian and my kids are black, half Filipino, black, Filipino, and white. But their mom, their grandpa, their grandmother is is white. And she we know we don't do this. Call my kids monkeys. And I almost blew a gasket. But I knew she didn't mean it in the way because they were jumping around, so I knew she didn't mean it in the way that I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. But I had to check her, like, "Hey, don't, don't call my kids monkeys. Like, that's call that, them that, something else. That, that's touchy. But don't call them that. You know." And it was like, "What was that? What was that Ice Cube show where they had the, uh, where he had them, them people dressed up as the, the opposite race?" Oh, the the something black. Yeah. yeah. And the lady Where he had the people put the prosthetics on yeah. the white people and they become black. Yeah. And then and then the like kind of towards the end of the show, that lady was like, You guys are the most <laughs> you guys are the most amazing creatures. And the black people looked at her like creatures. Mm -hmm. And you knew it wasn't coming from a place. She was she was at, she in her own way, she was honoring them. Yeah. But, but it came out way, like you use certain words yeah. like animals. Yeah. And you're like, Creatures, no, you know, it's not, like, you can't, you can't, can't do, that. do that because we've always been compared to that kind of shit. Yeah, you, you can't know what do I mean? that. So, yeah. so that's a thing too. But that's the other side of it um, that that never really gets talked about. Honestly, I mean, it just yeah. doesn't, you know. But and see, you know, like I said, I tell people all the time: the biggest divider in this world, the two biggest dividers, are money. And race. Yeah. And it's by design because the powers that be, if they can keep you fighting amongst yourself, they can continue to get rich. Yeah. Very true. Biggest divider in the world is money. And the divide is getting bigger and bigger. <sighs> you ain't gonna tell me. <laughs> I already know, like, the last two years has been. Getting bigger and bigger for me too. So, mm -hmm. well, that's our show for today. I'm not Neff. Thank you for tuning in, and we're back. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>